Hi, this is Shane Davis. Welcome to the 63rd HCCA Red Carpet Tour held this year in Duncan, B.C. Duncan is in the Cowichan Valley. It is known as the City of Totems, hence the name Totem Tour. Driving through the rural areas of the Cowichan Valley is almost like going back in time to when these vintage cars were in their heyday. Of great fascination was our visit to Harry and Shirley Blackstaff's private collection. In such a setting, our cars felt right at home. Members of the tribe, as we were designated, were welcomed by both Shirley and Harry. One of the many stars of the day was Fred Gray's 1912 Hudson 33 Speed Roadster. Fred was very generous in offering rides to all who were present. It was a fascinating and nostalgic sight to see the Hudson putter through the narrow tree-lined roadway. Now every time I did that with mine, Touches just a little bit in the wrong way. Oh yeah. But it does go, it's just a matter of playing with it. Uh -huh. And I think when I do the transmission, when I adjust that rod, that'll solve that, that whole problem. Okay, I think so.
get some gas. <laughs> Another stop on the totem tour is the Raptor Center. Raptors are a necessary and an amazing part of our environment. Each raptor plays its own part in maintaining the ecological health of our valley. Let's just watch and listen. Um, I've had a lot, we've had a lot of crazy different things get donated to us over the years that we've managed to, to use as food too. We'll get venison and game meat as well sometimes. Especially with ravens and crows, and they live around people, it's pretty easy to get. 
She hides in the dawn and dusk hours of the day. But his eyes work just as well in the daytime as they do at night. But obviously in the nighttime you don't get things like bald eagles, red tailed hawks, you don't have other competitors. Over. Much, yes, we have, she'll have their wild instinct. Um, she's actually one of our pickier eagles. Um, there are definitely a few people she does not like. And a few of us that she's like, yeah. You can hang out with me, but you, you don't come near me. He tries to make her a nest every time he sees her. Even out on the weather, he'll start playing with his leather straps, or he'll get some sticks and some pine cones, and he'll arrange them, and he'll look at her, and he'll call to her. She completely ignores him, but every day without fail, he's like, look how Think? Yeah. Yeah, you want to work. Isn't he lovely? He is three years old. So when he's flying, you will notice that he still has white wrist patches and he still has a white tail band. Any other questions about any of the eagles? years ago the African Lion Safari had extra kookaburras and said, hey, do you guys want some kookaburras? And we said, sure, why not? Yeah. Two years into our Raptor Rescue Society, our hospital, um, just last year we had one come in that had broken his wing and fortunately the break wasn't too bad and we were able to pin it. Tearing into flesh and that's because they are all carnivorous. They only eat raw meat. That's it. Right now he's got that foot down. It is so strong. That back talon, the hallux, is the most powerful and they really are incredibly powerful. Hi gorgeous. What a beautiful bird, hey? Yeah, they're very, very intense. As you can see, he's got his hackles up, the feathers on the back of his head. This is why they're such a fierce predator, and they can take down things as big as small deer and small antelope. No thanks. <laughs> he's up to be hunting. Something to hunt. Okay, little buddy, we're going to get you to walk right up the hill. You've done such a fantastic job. <laughs> How little money. So we've been very privileged to watch this guy grow up here at our center. We have his mom and dad still, some of his brothers and sisters. Uh, and again, we're really lucky to be able to watch him grow. All right, head up the field. We're all done. Thanks for the money. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm sure there's more here. <laughs> like plus carrying, going up that hill is a lot of work. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no. Up the hill. Up the hill. Harry. There we go. How about a big hand for our lovely guy? Thanks so much, Amy. of raptors that are truly social. They actually live in hunt as a pack. Most raptors are very solitary and they tend to stay um, by themselves. Pretty, They hunt by themselves occasionally with a mated pair, but very rarely in a pack. And these birds have been seen hunting in packs of up to 25 birds. I'm sorry, it's our favorite part of the demo, scaring the audience. You know it. <laughs> you are wonderful, Jerry. You're just a bat. You gonna head over to town? Is she not the most beautiful bird you've ever laid eyes on? Plug it up, face. Now these guys come with a bad rap. Not everybody loves vultures, but I hope when you leave, you're gonna ch we're gonna change your mind because they are super cool birds, highly intelligent, and they play a very pivotal role in our ecosystems, which we'll get into as well. Are they lovely? <laughs> look at that face. And if you look at the feathers, you'll notice he has these iridescent, iridescent sheen to them as well. Just fantastic birds, so elegant in the sky as well. Now they're not a true raptor. They don't catch their prey. What do they eat? Dead things. dead things, exactly. They're a scavenging bird. They only eat dead animals. <laughs> so by doing this, they're actually helping to keep everything clean. They're reducing fly populations. But more importantly, they're reducing disease. If they eat an animal that's died of something like rabies or, or anthrax or any sort of abstract random disease, it dies in their stomach. It doesn't kill them, and they don't pass it on which is perfect because a lot of scavenging animals do can smell, which is unique to turkey vultures. Other vultures don't have that sense of smell. Mm. Now, turkey vultures have some really cool adaptations for their lifestyle. First of all, they're bald, which is immediately obvious. I don't know if I, 
Oh, Brian, you're doing such nice playing. So we're done playing for today. You're going to jump on my head. I'm alive. Thank you. <laughs> um, so they evolve because they stick their faces into guts and intestines. It has two great functions. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but it actually keeps them cleaner. Their digestive systems are so acidic that when they pee on their legs, it kills bacteria, keeping them cleaner. Secondly, it coats the pores, prevents water loss, and thus it keeps them cooler in the summer months. So just keep that in mind this summer, if you get too hot. <laughs> this is cinnamon. Does anybody know what he is? <coughs> Got it. Very good ID skills. I wonder if anybody wants to take a wild guess as to where barn owls might like to live. A barn. A barn. You got it. The name says it all. These guys like to live in old barns, old churches, and old buildings, and the key word there is old. They like old buildings because something else lives there. Mice, you got it. They love to eat mice. Feature. Selena's going to bring him up a little bit closer so you guys can have a nice look at him because he's really lovely. Um, hopefully she'll walk him through you because I don't think he's going to do a lot of flying today, but that's okay. Now, owls have some really great superpowers because they are nocturnal predators. Secondly, they have exceptional hearing. And in fact, barn owls specifically are said to have the best hearing on the planet. Here we go. Tween people, right side by side with us. And one of the reasons they like to live there is because they love to eat pigeons. It's their favorite food. <laughs> um, of course, this has some benefits to us. And there's also a lot of them that have figured out that in a city, the best way to, the best way to catch a pigeon is to chase it into a high-rise building window. And you don't have to do as much work. <laughs> Another example of conservation of energy, but also their intelligence and their ability to adapt to humans living side by side with them. So I love that. It's a cool story. So folks, I guess that does bring us to the end of our demonstration. I'd love to... You see them every day. <laughs> um, so we'd love to bring more birds out, but uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of birds. So, yeah. Um, I hope that uh, you really enjoyed meeting these birds, and I hope that it will inspire you. Of course, a visit to the Cowichan Valley would not be complete without experiencing native dancing. Native songs and dances reflect the natural milieu and the creatures which are the inhabitants. Also, the local symbolism is expressed in their performance. Again, we can sit back and enjoy. The dance is called a paddle welcome song. So again, singing the song, welcoming each and every one of you here to our public uh, Welcome, everyone. Thank you.
grab a partner to come and join our party trip then. <laughs>
These highlights were just a few of the special activities we experienced during the Totem Tour. I have often said that one meets the most interesting people in the old car hobby. And, of course, interesting people always do interesting things.